Hello, and welcome to the first episode in a new series, where I share some of my model making techniques. This is a warts and all series, where you will also see what happens when things go wrong. After all, we learn at least as much from our mistakes as our successes. In episode 1, I'll show you how to make cold cure silicon rubber moulds for white metal or pewter casting. Silicon moulds can be made in any size, depending on the part you want to cast. These are some of the moulds for a 1 48 scale BF109, and range from the smallest of parts up to the fuselage and main wing. The principles I'll show you in this video will apply to all sizes of mould. Let's first start with some basics. The part, or master, that you want to mould can be made of any solid material. You'll struggle to cast thin parts using this method, as it can be difficult to get the metal to flow into the thin areas of the mould. If your parts are too chunky, the cooling metal will collapse in on itself, leaving a rough, porous surface. If your masters are between 1 and 4mm thick, they should cast well. The silicon rubber is often known as RTV, or Room Temperature Vulcanised Silicon Rubber. Now for the most important part. Whatever rubber you buy, it must be capable of withstanding at least 280 degrees centigrade. Anything else will end as an expensive disaster, and possibly a trip to hospital. I've listed some suppliers in the description below. Moulds can be one, two, or multi-part. One-piece moulds are quicker to make, but require very skillful cutting, and are hard to vent. We'll be making two-part moulds, which will be made over a couple of days. These are by far the most reliable of moulds and easiest to cast from. It is possible to make multi-part moulds, but often it would be better to redesign the master and go for more reliable two-part moulds. If you still want to try white metal casting, you should be aware of a few issues. You aren't going to get super crisp parts. You'll have to clean up your castings with files, sandpaper and wire wool. You should be aware that the quality of the castings decreases the larger the part you try and cast as you'll see in episode 2. However, this method will allow you to translate a weak plastic part into metal, and produce as many parts as you like, so it has its uses. The principle of this form of moulding and casting is pretty simple. Metal is poured into a feed cut into the top of the mould, and air comes out from thin vents towards the surface. There are a few things we can do to affect the success of the casting, but we'll come to them in due course. As a basic rule of thumb, moulds should be at least twice the height of the master. This is to create enough pressure forcing molten metal into the detail of the mould. This is very important, and key to a successful casting. You should also allow at least 12mm around the part for locators and vents. Right, that's enough theory, let's make some moulds. First we'll take a look at the masters I'm going to mould. These are all 3D printed resin parts. The figure is 1 to 48 scale, and the other parts of my 1 to 24 scale mouse tank. I've marked on the parts in marker pen where I want to feed the metal into the part. Generally, I feed into the thickest part and where there's little or no detail. Now, let's see what we need to get started. A flat board some plasticine, a roller, a square, a sharp knife, a 5mm drill bit, a sculpting tool, and some Lego. I start by softening my plasticine in an oven at a low temperature. You shouldn't need to do this with fresh plasticine, but mine has been reused so many times it's a bit hard. Next we take our plasticine and roll it out to form a flat layer about 3 to 4mm thick. I start by cutting a straight edge to the plasticine, marking the bottom of the mould. Then I position the master in the plasticine. I'll be feeding the metal into the pegs at the feet, so that's why the figure is this way up. I then carefully add and blend the plasticine halfway up the master. This is always easier with soft plasticine. It's worth taking your time with this stage, as keeping the plasticine smooth will dictate the quality of the casting and make the later stage of cutting the mould much easier. Mm -hmm. 
we need to build a box around the master to make the mould. And to do this, I use Lego. Using the Lego and a square, I cut the plasticine sides and then push in locator holes with the end of the 5mm drill bit. I always use the same 4x2 Lego module, as it's less fiddly than using odd sizes. I then start building up the Lego. Once I've gone up twice the height of the master, plus the locators, I cut off the top part of the plasticine, and then finish off the mould box. Ideally, the depth of the mould should allow for the silicon to cover the master by at least 5mm. The plasticine is then blended into the side of the Lego. And here are all of the moulds built up, and almost ready for silicon. Now for the next stage. We'll need some old paintbrushes, some Vaseline, some digital scales, a measuring jug that we know the weight of, a ladle, some silicon rubber, some catalyst, a stirring thing, and some wedges. Before we mix up our expensive silicon, we need to cover the plasticine with a mould release. For this I use Vaseline, it's cheap and effective. I begin by smearing some on by hand, and then carefully with an old paintbrush. It's important not to get any on the masters, as it'll fill in any detail. Now we can start mixing up some silicon, as per the manufacturer's instructions. Some manufacturers go by volume, some by weight. This silicon is by weight, so I ladle out what I think I'll need into a jug I know the weight of. Knowing the mix ratio and the weight of the jug, I can calculate that I need about 35 grams of the catalyst. After zeroing the scales, I measure out the catalyst and stir it in thoroughly. It's more important to make sure the silicon is well mixed than it is to avoid introducing air. There's nothing worse than finding part of your mould hasn't cured. I've been there. If you can avoid introducing too many air bubbles, that's great. If not, don't worry. You can degas the silicon in a vacuum chamber, but in my experience, it doesn't matter if you don't. Now we can begin adding silicon to the mould boxes. Start by brushing a layer of silicon over the masters, working it into the detail. This will prevent any air bubbles from forming near the masters. Then brush silicon into the locator holes. Because the silicon's thick, you need to do this gradually, to let the trapped air out. You can now gradually pour in the silicon from the jug.
you'll see some air bubbles rise to the surface. Most of these will burst. Finally, you should make sure the moulds are level while the silicon cures overnight. I'm using wedges, but you could use anything. On to the next day and making the second half of the moulds. I use a steel rule to carefully slice the plasticine and mould off of the board. We then need to break the Lego off the silicon, taking care not to dislodge the plasticine at this stage. The top edges of the silicon mould are trimmed back at an angle of 45 degrees and any stray bits of silicon are removed. I then sprinkle talc over the outside of the moulds to stop them being sticky to touch. We can now carefully peel back the plasticine, trying not to dislodge the masters. Excess silicon that crept past the plasticine is now trimmed away and any loose plasticine is picked out before cleaning the mould down with lighter fluid to remove the plasticine residue. Sometimes the masters become dislodged. This often happens with small parts. They must be secured back into the mould with small amounts of superglue to hold them in place. The moulds are then built back up again with the Lego and a fresh layer of Vaseline is added as before, carefully avoiding getting any on the masters. This layer of Vaseline is crucial as you don't want the two sides to bond together. You should be aware that the Vaseline will dry out, so don't leave it for too long before you pour the second side of the mould. Some people use silicon spray as a mould release, but I've seen it get under the masters and pop them out. This is the last thing you need. Now we just have to mix up another batch of silicon and pour it in as before, again brushing it onto the masters first.
play with the silicon a bit to help get some of the air bubbles out, but make sure the moulds cure level. With the silicon cured, we can now take the moulds apart and cut them ready for casting. Once all the Lego has been removed, I cut the edges as before with a sharp blade and remove any stray bits of silicon. The outside is then given a dusting of talc to make the moulds easier to handle. The moulds can now be carefully opened and the masters removed. Loose bits of rubber are again trimmed away with tweezers and a sharp blade. This is where the masters were loose in the mould and the silicon crept past. I begin by marking out where to cut the mould with a biro, choosing to cut the feeds into the thickest half of the mould. My first cut is at 45 degrees, about 1mm below the surface. The following cuts are also at 45 degrees, with the aim being to cut a slot for the metal to flow into the mould cavity. I then draw in biro the outline of the feeds and press the two halves of the mould together to mark the other side. The top part of the feed is then cut into the other half of the mould and the two halves are again put together to mark the pouring hole. This is opened up to make pouring the metal a lot easier, especially with a small mould. Now we can cut the air vents. We need to try and imagine where air will gather in the mould when the metal is poured in and cut vents that will take the air away to the top of the mould. These channels need only be a millimetre wide but must come out as far up the mould as you can get. Any narrow areas where the metal flow is restricted can also benefit from air vents. If you have deep masters, drilling air vents through the mould will also help. You should then cut vent channels across the back of the mould to take the air away. And finally, here we have three moulds ready for casting. That'll be in the next episode of my how-to series. I hope you found the first episode of this series interesting. If you did, hit the like button and subscribe to my YouTube channel to see the next episode, where I'll show you how to cast from these new silicon moulds. If you have any questions about issues raised in this series, just leave them in the comments and I'll get back to you. Thanks for watching.